All right. I don't know. People are walking in and out of the bar. I'm sorry, guys. Um, every uh, week we mix it up. We bring on a Democrat and a Republican. We try to give you all points of view. We had a Democrat a little earlier who was kind of disingenuous, but I gave him at least a chance to say what he had on his mind. Um, but I didn't love the different approaches he was taking. Now, this Democrat, my friend David Eisenbach, he's a he's a Democrat. He's a professor at Columbia University. He ran for New York City public advocate. And uh, my favorite Republican, Johnny Burnett, is here. He's managing director at a One Empire group. And these guys slug it out every week. Um, what do you think, uh, David, about the manager of this public house in Staten Island being arrested for occupying his business? Well, I think it was because he was defying the order uh, to not have you know people inside the bar, and the fact is that Staten Island is a hot spot, and uh, it's one of the hottest spots in New York State, and at least for the time being, I think it's uh, you know responsible to not have people inside uh, having drinks together. Okay, so you think um, you think that small businesses should have the government determine arbitrary reasons. Um, to stop the spread, like half is an orange zone and half is a yellow zone. So there's a bar two blocks away that's open. So why would these guys be closed if two blocks away it's open? Will the COVID stop at the border there? I don't know. Yeah, no, that is a that is a problem. But the the, the fact is that the infection rate uh, is pretty high in Staten Island. It's now about eight point six percent of those who are tested come out positive. Uh, so, uh, extreme times call for extreme measures, and and certainly I'm not. Okay. I don't think the, that that should so be let's lock, you let's, said. Lock, let's lock up the capitalists. I get it. I mean, it makes sense coming out of a Columbia guy. You know, I know how that goes. Johnny B. <laughs> um, here, here's my problem. Here's my problem. Being a math wonk, okay. Um, when you use a term like eight percent infection rate, sounds ominous. Um, but we still have a 99.97 survival rate. So should we be locking down the whole freaking state because three one hundredths of a percent of people died from COVID? I don't think so. Right. It, it's it's actually fuzzy math. Um, and it's almost like, uh, you know, just using um, algebra as an example, you can't solve anything by only working on one side of the equal side. You have to actually look at the entire equation to solve the issue. And, we, and you know, I love David, right? Everyone knows I love David, you know, but David is a student of history, right? But the thing is, if we continue these extreme measures, we will all be history. Our, our country, our livelihood, our freedom. You know, when we look at the world, right, and then look at the U.S., the U.S. is a reflection of the world. There's people from all over that come here. Why do they come here? Because of the American dream. They want to escape the socialist and, and strong arm of the government from where they came. So, so, so the last thing they would want, we would want as Americans, is the strong arm of government deciding who wins, who fails, who succeeds, who doesn't. To use JT's example, a business just two blocks away is empowered. In fact, you're driving more business to that location than by virtue of the, the decision, you're deciding which businesses to fail. But guess what? Guess what, JT and David and viewers? When, when those businesses start collapsing, guess what? Here's what people don't understand and realize. Those other businesses, they're next. That's right. I, I, I used this. We had a, a big rally here last night. Um, thousands of people showed up to support the owners here, stand up for freedom and liberty and capitalism and all that good stuff. Um, but the bottom line is I read the quote, you know, first they came for the socialists. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and very appropriate. Everybody's like, yeah, 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 we'll do something. And then you find out everybody's gone. There's nobody to fight for you. Um, right. Now, fighting with David uh, over the last couple of weeks, Johnny B., um, because he's been telling me for two weeks now that the election is over. And now we have this postal uh, contract, with Jesse Morgan, mm -hmm. reporting that 280,000 ballots were shipped from New York to Harrisburg, PA, and then they disappeared. Um, what do you make of that, John? <laughs> you, you know, the, the way I describe things, we all know what, what, what happened to Jeffrey Epstein, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just a matter of proving it, right? And if a truck goes from Bethpage, New York, all the way <laughs> to Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, there has to be a lot of cameras, right, on the highway, tollway, all these ways, right? There's sufficient evidence to track everything. We can determine if there's water on Mars, right? Why can't we determine, you know, the path of, of a truck with, with, with balance? Why can't we determine all these different things and nuances and, and, and elements of fraud in all these different states? This is ridiculous. Yeah, so we should be able, we I, should be I, able to bring about a high level of accountability. They should. they should. And the only explanation of why, after all these weeks, they haven't come up with one piece of evidence that shows there was fraud is that there wasn't any. At I disagree with you, David. I, on, you know what, I know you disagree. But every federal judge history. agrees with me. Bob Barr agrees with me. Two Republican governors agree with me. Numerous bipartisan uh, uh, election officials all across America agree with me. There has been no proof, no evidence of any fraud yet. So you can keep on believing what Rudy Giuliani tells you until there's this, a single piece of evidence. I don't know. Uh, JT, I got to get this in, JT. I got to get this in. Hey, David, David, you, you, you're a student of history. Let, let's talk about the present, right? Arizona, Arizona, the judge allowed a random sampling to take place. And they found, and, and, and there, the, through that random sampling, 3% of the sample was defective. That's just cause, right? If that 3% continues, which oftentimes it does, when we're talking about numbers and trends, if we actually audit more, we will actually find more. We have we have basic level evidence and proof to take, take a deeper dive. But the thing is, you guys don't want to take a deeper dive. You guys, why? Because you're happy with the outcome. It would be yeah. just in the reverse if you were worried yeah. about the stop. outcome. Stop, everyone, stop. Don't exhaust all options. Hurry up, Donald Trump. Concede, concede, concede. Because <laughs> the right now. It's like right. you know, running a mile race. I'm winning after three quarters, and I start telling the other guy to quit before I finish the, the, yep. the last quarter of a mile. A Actually, whack. no one cares if Donald Trump concedes or not. He's going to get his ass booted out of there by the Secret Service if he doesn't vacate by January 20th. This is this is why you gotta love the mix it up segment because all voices are heard. Uh, David Eisenbach and Johnny Burnett, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Spirit you of the it. and I'll uh, see you guys again next week. We take a quick break. We come back right after this with Mitch Rochelle, founding partner of Macro Trend Advisors, talk about what's happening with your money right after this. Yeah.